the Head of Evidence and Knowledge within Natural Resources Wales, and I'll be chairing today's session. I'll just say a few words in Welsh. So, croeso i bawb i'r um, session diweddar ar uh, tawna. Byddwn ni'n cyflwyno uh, mwy afri fo um, cynnwys yn, yn Saesneg. Uh, os oes i'n rhywun eisiau cyfrannu na gofyn cwestiynau yn y Gymraeg, i na croeso i chi yn un gwneud yn gorau glas i ateb yn y Gymraeg ac yn y Saesneg hefyd. So just saying that even though we will be presenting largely in English or all in English, we welcome contributions and questions in Welsh. Okay, so um, today the aims of the session are to showcase the interim report, um, which is out on our website, and what it means for SONAR 2020. It's also to enable um, our stakeholders and staff to discuss the messages in the interim report. So the outcomes we want are that everyone's briefed on the content and the purpose of the interim report, and um, we Get, give you a chance to provide views and suggestions for the development of SONAR 2020 and you understand the process for inputting to SONAR 2020. So we've provided you with a whole load of very detailed slides today. We won't go through them all in detail, they're largely for your reference. With a lot of people on the line, there's a, I'll come to it in a second, but we need to identify the people who are dialing in. I think there's about four of you so that we can get in touch with you. Um, and uh, if people are in a room together, we'll, we'll ask you to identify yourself shortly. But the etiquette for today is please keep your microphones on mute um, because otherwise it sometimes gives us feedback. Please use the question um, instant messenger questioning function to ask your questions and we will break um, throughout the presentations to deal with the questions. Okay, so if we go on to the next slide, we'll try and remember to say when we're changing slides so that people on the phone can, um, yeah, can uh, follow us. Um, so we have some people on the phone. Can I ask you to just shout out your name now, please. Simon Shay. Thank you, Simon. Alan Motherwood. Thank you, Alan. Anna de Rumble. That was a bit quiet. Could you repeat? Anna de Rumble. You might need to put that in an instant message for us because we couldn't um, pick that one up. Um, the next one. Rachel Lewis Davis, NFU Cymru. Hi, Rachel, thank you. Okay, if you're shy to speak, you can put your name on the instant message uh, function and we'll pick them up later. Okay, we are getting some feedback, so if you. Bob Gilchrist, I don't know if you got that. Oh, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Hi, Bob. Okay, if we could ask everybody to go on mute, check you're on mute because we are getting some feedback. Okay, if there are people in a room together, again, it's probably quicker if you just put the um, people in the room on the instant messenger and we'll pick it up from there. Okay, thanks Ed, we've just got your message, so um, yeah, we know you're here. Okay, so the next slide is the... Um, Sorry, that, that slide just identifies my colleagues in the room or on the end of the line. So Russell, Julie, and uh, please in particular to welcome Emily Finney from Welsh Government. So we will take about one hour or less to do this. Um, and we will, as I say, break for questions when we'll pick them up from the, um, the message function. So without further ado, we'll go on to the next slide, which is questions on the purpose and function. If you're in the wrong uh, um, webinar, now's your chance to dial out quietly. <laughs> I'm going to talk through the main themes in the report in terms of the challenges to our seminar and the evidence we can gather to inform the responses Wales can make to these. Looking at the, the role of the interim report, we're asked to do two things, to describe the emerging changes in evidence and to describe newly identified evidence gaps. 
I think it's about the, the big picture, what's the evidence on this current state of sustainable management of natural resources. The big picture has been captured by the recent United Nations reports on the linked climate and nature emergencies. And so these two categories form our strategic challenges in the report. The first one on climate change. Um, since the Industrial Revolution, humans have released 1,500 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide through burning fossil fuels. That's led to a 43% rise in CO2 in the atmosphere. That's a level not matched for 3 million years. And you can see on screen the resulting rise in temperatures. In response, national governments are facing pressure to go beyond the commitments made as part of the Paris Agreement in 2015. And in November, the COP26 meeting in Glasgow aims to do this. We know we need to drastically cut, reduce emissions by 2030, and every degree of warming we avoid gives us a more livable planet. The COP26 meeting could be our best chance to accelerate action and change our current course. Looking at the second challenge, the nature emergency, we can see in the last few decades the rate of extinction of species has been between 100 and 1,000 times greater than the geological norm. That's a speed not seen for 65 million years. Looking at the global system, and mapped out on screen are the, the global systems, the danger of threshold or sudden tipping point has already been approached or reached for the nitrogen cycle, for greenhouse gases, for biodiversity and for phosphates. To address this, the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity is meeting in China this October for a once in a decade meeting. The current proposal is that almost a third of the world's oceans and lands should be protected by the end of the decade to stop and reverse biodiversity decline. This is to combat the sixth, sixth mass extinction of species. The proposal sets a 2030, 2030 deadline for conservation and restoration of ecosystems that perform crucial services for humans. It has a 20 point draft plan which aims to introduce controls on invasive alien species, to reduce pollution from plastic waste and excess nutrients by 50%. Now, all of these, these challenges, uh, the, the UN is very clear, they need transformative changes to address. The UN flag up the importance of raising awareness about consumption, about protecting local environments, promoting local economies, restoring degraded areas to strengthen ecological networks, having well-connected protected areas, catchment protection, and center incentives and sanctions to reduce pollution and damage affecting biodiversity. The UN says that changes in production and consumption of energy, food, feed, fiber, and water are all needed. The IPPS state that transformative change is needed and that goals for conserving and sustainably using nature and achieving sustainability cannot be met by current trajectories. The goals for 2030 and beyond may only be achieved through transformative changes across economic, social, political and technological factors. The UN Global Environment Outlook gives food, energy, transport systems, urban planning and chemical production as primary examples of systems of production and consumption that need to change. According to the IPBS, this change can be brought about by conserving, effectively managing and sustainably using terrestrial landscapes and improving the sustainability of economic and financial systems. Together, these form our two strategic response categories, green infrastructure and the circular economy. So this is a model of what a circular economy could look like. It seems obvious that we can't continue with a current model, which sees raw natural resources going in at the top and waste emerging from the, from the bottom. If everyone in the world had the lifestyle we, we do in Wales, we'd need two and a half planets, and we only have one. So transformative change is needed to alter the direction of our economic system. Our current model of economic development is consuming the planet. 
The second of our strategic responses is green infrastructure. We need to recognise that our civilization is built on the services we get from nature and we can't keep transforming natural capital into other forms of capital without cutting off the flow of benefits from nature on which we depend. We need a model of development built around ecosystem services and not on top of them. We need to feed information on green infrastructure, on the green infrastructure which is providing us with ecosystem services into the town and country planning system and into rural mechanisms such as agri-environment schemes. The IPBS report says that transformative change is facilitated by innovative governance approaches that incorporate approaches such as inclusive, informed and adaptive governance. The Welsh policy framework is built around these ideas. The Environment Act and our Wellbeing Act set out a systems approach. The range of challenges to SMNR and possible responses detailed in the last sonar fitted to Welsh Government's natural resources policy and are implemented via policy and area statements. SONA is not limited to NRW's remit or even devolved policy, but it's there to take a systems approach to capture the connections to what is relevant. We need everyone's help to pull this together. NRW are writing the report, but it's a report for Wales. OK, thanks very much, Russell. Um, so it's a chance for people to ask questions about the um, interim report in particular and the analysis and um, potential solutions to the emergencies that have been declared on um, climate change and biodiversity. So you can use the instant messenger bar or if we keep if we stay on silent people can jump in and come off mute and ask a question directly. Okay uh, IBPS Oh yeah, I did think about spelling that out. So you've got a letter missing, which is an E, it's IPBS, but it's the International Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. So it's the, the UN's, well, it's, it's kind of a sister body of the International Panel on Climate Change, IPCC. So those are the two UN bodies that have been issuing reports on climate change and nature emergency biodiversity loss this year. Okay, um, so <coughs> trying to find which question is related to which individual. If it's Robert who um, has a question which can't unmute, if you put it on the message bar, we'll pick it up from there. That's a good question. Um, so shall I take Mick's question? Yes. What are we going to do about it? Um, the What we're going to do about it is where Sona is gathering, Sona isn't um, an action plan, Sona is gathering the evidence to inform action. So what we want to do in CERNO is to set out the evidence on the challenges and then the evidence on potential responses that people could make. And as I said, that can either feed in, be used by Welsh Government for the natural resources policy, feed in through area statements or things like local development plans. So we're looking here for um, the evidence in CERNO to inform those conversations. We're not looking to um, it isn't SONAR's remit to lead on to um, agreed actions. Okay, thanks Russell for clarifying. Robert, if you have a long question and you can't unmute, your only option is to type it out and we'll come back to it um, at the next question break. Oh, there it is. Okay. So read it out. <clears throat> Yes, for people on the phone. So, um, Robert's question is, the UK CCC currently have call for evidence open to contribute to the next CCRA. There will be a long crossover of work completed by NRW for SONAR. What work have you done to catalogue evidence? And can I ask that you share evidence related to climate risk to the UK CCC? I, I don't think we have the, the, yeah. the climate change leads with us to answer that question, but rest assured that any evidence we have on that will be including in in SONA, and, um, but I don't know what contribution we're making. Okay, so we'll take that one away and talk to our climate change leads to see if, how we're engaging with the UK committee. 
Okay, and then Lisa, there's a question there. How do we recognize the multifunctional nature of landscapes when the report divides facets of landscapes into silos, which is not a joined up approach as advocated by the landscape team and as included in the last report? Okay, um, probably a long and involved debate going on here, I would suggest. I think, yeah, I, I think that this is in relation to us using the, the eight broad um, ecosystems, the, you know, for instance, urban, freshwater, woodland, in order to capture the detail. But we are, you know, we're not looking to, we're not, those aren't silos, those are just um, helpful management categories in terms of gathering the issues happening in different places across Wales under different sorts of management and then informing um, evidence for that could go into policy responses because it is the policy, you know, the, the way that um, people work is governed by those sorts of categories, woodland, agriculture, freshwater. So those are the reasons we've done that, but we're not saying that um, we are in the report, we do have a series of cross-cutting chapters and we do want to bring out the picture for Wales as a whole. Um, I mean, it, we effectively can't do, you couldn't avoid the silo approach if you divided Wales into different landscapes because you'd have the same problem. And if you took Wales as one landscape, that would, that would be too big a, a starting point. So we're starting with the eight broad ecosystems just as a, a kind of placeholder for what's going on. Um, but that, that, those, those are going to be brought together for a Wales-wide picture um, across the board. The whole report is about integration. Okay. Thanks, Russell. I think that's a really good response. Thank you. Um, okay, so we've just had an update the, on the um, Climate Change Committee closing at the end of this month. Question from Katie, how do we get hold of the whole report rather than just a summary? I haven't been able to see this, work this out from the website. Well, at present, the only report on the website is the interim report. The previous report should also be on the website. It's in a different format. It's downloadable as PDFs. Um, we'll come on to the um, Sonar 2020. This is only an interim report. It was in the legislation. It's called a draft report. And Russell showed um, the reasons why we're doing it. It's a heads up and a lead in to Sonar, which will not be delivered until December this year. So. Um, the last report, 2016, is downloadable as PDFs, and the interim is our interactive web pages on our um, website. I think all participants should have been sent um, the link to that, but we can send out the link at the end of this um, webinar as well. Yes, okay. we do have an email address. Um, it will be on some of the slides that come up in a bit. Okay. <clears throat> okay, one more. Oh, that's a thanks, the fans. Um, we, we will break for questions after each session. So if you think of anything else relating to what you've heard on Russell's presentation, then um, you can save it and or just put it on the instant messenger. Um, what I propose now is we go on to um, the plan and the timeline, which Julie will uh, introduce for us. So over to Julie. Thank you, Mike. OK, so um, I just wanted to run through what we're doing um, and how we're doing, um, how we're going to be producing uh, Sonar 2020. So just as a reminder that we are using the internationally recognised um, DIPSIA approach, that's driver, pressure, impact, state and response. Um, the orange boxes on this slide um, are components of the Sonar report and will be set out across the eight ecosystems that we were just talking about. And where relevant, the seven themes that we have identified as the building blocks for the report. Um, in order to do this and ensure we're assessing uh, the extent to which the sustainable management of natural resources is being achieved, we are using four measures of SMNR to guide the assessment and these will be presented in Sonar 2020. So the interim report um, has set out how we plan to organise organize Sonar 2020, um, and that will be around different levels of information and around these eight ecosystems and seven themes and the four measures of SMNR. And there's a little bit more information actually on the web pages if you want to Look at that. 
Um, and then the quite big question, which we all want to know, is how will we know if we are achieving SMR? <laughs> are we moving in the right direction? So our current thinking is that all data will be part of the evidence presented in these building blocks. That's the ecosystems and the themes um, using the measures. Um, this will include what has traditionally been described as indicators, but we don't want to go down the path of an official set of indicators for SONAR. We'll use indicators that are published elsewhere, but we need to be flexible and reactive to the ev evidence we use to assess the sustainable management of natural resources. We will publish an inventory describing the data sets which are being used in the assessment. So each building block, ecosystem or theme will include an assessment of the extent to which a seminar is being achieved. Um, if possible, it will include a future look, future outlook um, and will be based on current evidence. We will then carry out a SWOT analysis as described in the interim report. So what are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats to achieving the sustainable management of natural resources? This will hopefully lead to the headline messages around whether we are achieving SMNR at that point in time. Um, this is the headline measure referred to in the interim report. Um, so just as a reminder um, for those that have been involved in these webinars before, it's the timeline we're working to and just to tell you if you haven't. Um, so we've published the interim report in December. Um, we have assessment leads um, throughout NRW who are continuing to talk to specific groups around the evidence they have available to carry out their assessment. Um, this includes ensuring that the two challenges and two responses from the interim report are discussed across the chapters and opportunities for filling evidence needs are identified. We want the, to use the interim report to gather momentum for agreeing the final opportunities for the sustainable management of natural resources that will go into SONAR 2020 and also inform obviously the next natural resource policy. It will also be used to help focus resources across Wales on filling evidence needs. By April, we are planning to have the content of the ecosystem and theme chapters for the final report. We will use these to inform discussions to finalise the opportunities towards SMNR, so that by the summer we will be reviewing the content and designing the report with a deadline of December to publish it on our website. If you are already in contact with the relevant assessment lead for your area of work, please continue to engage with them. If you are unsure who you should talk to and are able to help, please email the inbox and we will be in touch with the relevant people. So that's sonar at naturalresourceswales.gov.uk. So what happens next? We want to continue to engage with you. Um, we have three more webinars like this one planned to keep you informed of progress. Um, and this should include opportunities to share our findings with you when we have something to share. Okay, okay so we'll pause there for um, any questions. Um, Sue Burns asking if there is a list of the assessment leads so we can make yeah. those available in the notes after this meeting. We can, Sue's internal, so we'll. Yes. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah, but for everyone yeah. to know who, who to contact. Yeah. yeah. But please use the sonar inbox if, you, if you're unsure. Okay. And we'll pass it on. Okay, any other questions on the timeline, how you get involved? Okay. Um... Okay, so Edwin is asking if there's an assessment link <coughs> human wellbeing, and if so, are they linking in with Public Health Wales? So we have got um, some advisors who work obviously with um, wellbeing, and they are working with the leads to make sure that wellbeing is addressed across the themes and chapters. So it's across all themes and yes. chapters. Okay. And are they working with Public Health Wales? I hope they are, and if not, they will be. 
Okay, thank you. All right, so three quick questions. Um, how is it different from State of Nature report? Do you want me to answer that quickly and then um, Russell and Julie can come in? State of, State of Nature, uh, for those who don't know, is, was released at the end of last year by NGOs, but um, it had a major contribution from all of the UK conservation bodies as well as JNCC. So the data, a lot of the data and information and assessment we're using is similar. However, um, SONAR, the purpose is as an assessment of SMNR. So it goes into that stage. So it brings in the two acts and responsibilities for public bodies and everyone else in Wales to make sure we're delivering the sustainable use of our natural resources. So that's the difference, really. It's the policy context within Wales. Julie, do you want to add anything? No, I think that's it. No, Russell? I, I do. I do. Yep. Go on, Russell. Um, well, it's just SMNR. It's, um, you know, the Welsh legislation is, is built up around the United Nations policy and this, this concept of pursuing sustainable management of natural resources. And so the context for us, I know the state of nature is, um, is you know, it's a really good um, set of information and we've used it in the interim report. Um, SONO is, is wider than that because we're looking at all of the management of the environment. So we're looking at um, all the, you know, pollution, fly tipping, um, CO2 emissions, we're looking at the, the whole big picture. So that for me is the, the context where we're looking at, um, you know, the sustainable development context, uh, not just the natural components, obviously, you know, really key part of it, but it's um, SMNR is a, is a wider remit covering basically anything connected with um, natural resources. Okay. Thank you, Russell. Um, so the second question there was, um, how is assessment being done given the lack of funding for field surveys? Um, well, it's based on the evidence which is available. We can't um, create evidence. What we have done, though, is look at the evidence gaps and which ones are critical to the assessment of SMNR. So we're trying to fill those as best we can. Um, and we also look at the, the relevance, the confidence um, of the evidence that we're using in the assessments of SMNR. So, you know, just because we have the, the duty to produce SMNR, it doesn't mean we can magically um, make all the evidence gaps go away, but we are dealing with them in a, in a structured way. And also, uh, Mike, I mean, the Act and the SONAR, the, you know, the Environment Act doesn't shy away from hiding from this problem. It's asking us one of the three key points we're asked to do under the Environment Act in the interim report is set out evidence gaps. And so, you know, it's not just um, th this is kind of brought out as Welsh Government have specified that because they want to know, do we have what's needed? So it's for us to set out that and explain um, you know, what the priorities are in, in using what will always be, um, you know, limited funds, um, but uh, as everyone's got a limit. Um, but yeah, to set out very clearly why, what gaps are, are needed and, and um, the, the evidence provided if we had those. Yes. And one thing I would add, Russell, is that the lack of evidence is not an excuse for lack of action. Um, children around the world can understand what the pressing needs are based on the evidence. So, um, you know, in the UK, we're fairly rich in evidence. We have some key gaps, obviously, but it isn't going to stop us pursuing the aim of SMNR. OK, uh, where are we on the question? Can we have a quick look at the slide? Just wants to look at that, I yeah. think. OK, so we'll leave that one up for the moment. Um, and the question of intrinsic value comes up every time we do a webinar. Um, Emily, do you want to say something on that? It, it's referred to in the legislation. I mean, my own view is that without humans putting a value on things, there is no value. <laughs> However, <laughs> it, it, yeah, just to um, just to confirm that the intrinsic value is actually on the face of the Environment Act. It's recognised there as yeah. being really key. Yeah, and I think that's to do with the way we feel about nature in Wales, which is um, quite special. So um, I'm not being unsympathetic, but it is referred to in in the the Act as well. Yeah. Um, and Tabby has asked about indicators. Um, so the leads are currently um, identifying the data sets that they're going to be using for the assessments. As soon as we've pulled that together into a form that we can share, Tabia, I will I will contact you um, and I would appreciate 
your advice on some of it, if that's all right. Okay. Indicators is quite a challenging area for us to work in and we can't um, we can't invent indicators which we have to go out and no. collect a whole load more data for because as you know um, in the time of austerity we've we've all had you know across government sector 30 percent cuts so we're doing less monitoring we're just trying to be more creative with the data and information that we have and that we are currently collecting um, and the final question up there so far is continued use of anecdotal evidence to supplement evidence gaps similar to SOMAR 2016 so Julie yes if there is a, a strong um, understanding of that data and um, it's good quality we will be using it yes yeah okay thank you um, okay how can we get data sets to understand the state and condition of natural resources at a local level and therefore improve and manage the resources better okay that's a big question um, so so now is at the national level um, this time around we are hoping that we will have um, we will be publishing or providing links through to our SMNR portal, which will provide access to some of the data which is being used at a national level, but some of it you'll be able to drill down at for different levels. At the same time, we've got people working on area statements. Yes, yeah, so I, I would suggest area statements through Natural Resources Wales um, area. Um, offices is the best way to uh, get involved in that if, if you're looking at sites in particular. Yeah. Um, can I uh, just just to add to that as well? Um, in the delivery framework for sustainable management and natural resources, that local level um, evidence is collected through the area statement route and is fed back to the national report to SONAR in due course. Yeah. OK, thank you, Emily. OK. So no more questions at the moment. We'll um, take the opportunity then to move on and invite Emily to do the um, the last portion of the webinar. That's OK. And we've got a bit of a, a water crisis in the office here, but we're getting on, getting on with it. Sit. Yeah, sit now. Left. Oh, I had a, oh sorry. The, uh, so it's just that. left left click there. okay thank you okay thank you very much so um we we wanted to link up a little bit um on the discussion on the sonar interim report um knowing that we are halfway through the first implementation implementation cycle for the sustainable management of natural resources as a whole so we wanted to make the connection to some of the work that um Welsh Government is taking forward on delivery, especially around the two um, big response options that Russell mentioned in his first presentation. So um, this, I'm not going to go through all the slides here, but there's a lot of reference material if people do want to get involved um, or find out more about what Welsh Government are doing, then there's lots of references to the different work that policy teams across the whole Welsh Government are doing to take this forward. Um, so a little recap on the delivery framework itself. Um, but we have the State of Natural Resources Report, which um, we've just been talking about, and then the National Natural Resources Policy and Welsh Ministers respond to the evidence in the State of Natural Resources Report in pulling together a national policy. And then area statements are about delivering that national policy at a local level. And they're partly about developing a local evidence base for public service delivery and others to use in, in their work. Um, but it's also about people taking action at a local level as well. So there's two levels of delivery there. It's um, one at a national level through the natural resources policy and one at a local level through NRW's area statements. Um, in setting this out, this is this is purely what Welsh Government are doing. But one of the really key ways of working, if we're going to affect change, um, is about collaboration. It's about working across different sectors and different organisations and coming together to tackle what Russell was outlining about the systems approach. So it's not about working in silos. And one of the really key things that I um, just wanted to emphasise is that although we set out what Welsh Government are doing, this is about collaborative action for everybody. OK, so um, in the natural resources policy, then the current one, we are midway through the implementation of the first cycle. 
So it's a five year implementation cycle. And we have set three broad priorities in it. One is about nature based solutions um, broadly equivalent to the response option about green infrastructure. Um, one of them is about resource efficiency, and renewable energy, which is broadly similar to uh, circular economy. And one is about taking a place based approach. So I'm going to cover a little bit about um, what Welsh Government are doing on uh, the first one, nature based solutions. So um, the first slide is really just the definition of what we mean by it. So it's linking natural resources to human well-being, essentially. Um, we've pulled together some um, graphics, infographics on uh, what success looks like. So what actions we are encouraging people to take collaboratively um, and how we need to work together to do that and, and uh, really put in place the new ways of working that we have. So we've got one there on urban green infrastructure, which sets out all the different types of things we can do. And then across Welsh Government, these are all the references about what different teams are doing to make that happen. So we've referenced things like planning policy, air noise quality, climate change, um, mitigation and adaptation. There's a whole range of different actions there. We've got grant schemes as well, which people can get involved with. And then um, in rural areas as well, we have something similar. So again, we've set out the kind of actions that we are encouraging people to take there. And again, um, we've set out web links to um, consultations and strategies um, and activity that are currently taking place to help support delivery of that as well. And then lastly, we've got one on woodland and forestry. And again, we've got uh, web links there to how you can take action. So um, this is just uh, also reinforcing um, the point that Russell made in his first slide. So a lot of the actions that we are currently doing and taking forward through our policies and strategies are about those key actions for transformative change around land management. So it's making the connection that um, they do link back. Uh, so we've also got a priority on circular economy. And again, that's definition. Um, and this is setting out what our renewable energy, energy efficiency team are currently doing. Um, and also the new consultation that's currently just been launched on circular economy approaches for Wales. So I'd encourage everybody to get involved in that consultation, which is launched just at the beginning of January. And again, linking to place-based approaches. So we have a number of grant schemes in Welsh Government, which are about local delivery, but one of the very key actions as well are NRW's area statements. And I know that there is lots of engagement across Wales going on at the moment about area statements. So um, if you do want to take action, I would encourage you to get involved with NRW in doing that as well. Um, and that, that's it. It was just a whistle stop and reference um, of how you can get involved. OK, thank you very much, Emily. OK, so that concludes the presentation section of the webinar. So it's a chance for you to um, ask questions about anything to do with Sonar Report or anything related to the Sonar Report, i.e. what we're going to do about it and the like. So um, we'll pause, we'll pick up questions from the um, Instant Messenger. So the first question from Sue Byrne is, is there a possibility of streamlining our language around SMNR? It seems a shame we've got green infrastructure in one place and nature-based solutions in another. Language is a challenge and um, I think it's difficult for all of us to remember how impenetrable some of our language is um, when we step outside our little bubbles. So um, I, yes, I take the challenge on the chin, Sue. I think we do need to do better. Um, Emily? I, I completely agree as well. And um, one of the things I'm very keen on is feedback on what language works with our stakeholders as well. So if you have any feedback on what does work, then I'm really happy to take that on board. Yeah, yeah. Even the term biodiversity, which we've been familiar with for many decades, is quite unknown in the general public. They would understand nature or wildlife or countryside. But um, yeah, we we assume lots of things. OK, so a question from Melanie Meaden. When will Welsh Government be releasing more information to stakeholders about the National Forest Programme so that connections can be made to area statements, wellbeing plans, etc.? 
Um, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I will take that back to our woodland and forestry team and get back to you. I don't know what exact dates they're planning to do that. OK, thank you. Um, the previous report was a bit thin on marine. Is this being prioritised more in 2020? Um, I, d I don't know whether it was a bit thin. It was one of our priority areas in terms of um, coastal and marine, as I remember. So it did punch its weight. I mean, it may reflect that not many people engage with the sea. We have um, a relative shortage of marine data, but um, we're certainly, it's certainly a huge area um, in terms of circular economy and nature-based solutions, if you use that jargon, where the First Minister has given us direction on marine renewables, for example. So I hope um, we're not ignoring it, but if you want to get involved, please do. Emily. I, um, for the first sonar report as well, there was um, a specific evidence programme um, for the marine plan at the time, um, which is why um, I think in the sonar report it was it was referenced that it would be taken forward through that route. OK, yeah. all right. So maybe referring to and that. And now we've got the marine plan that's out anyway. Yeah, OK. It's a busy area. OK, thank you. Thanks for the question. Um, Sue Williams, are the infographics available on the Welsh Government website? They will be shortly, sometime in January. OK, so worth waiting for. Um, so Mick saying it was nature when I started, then wildlife, then biodiversity, now natural resources. Yeah, there's, um, yeah, we're talking about the same thing we've been talking about for at least three or four generations in terms of sustainable development and, and even climate change. I, I, had a file clear out from the 90s and got out all my stickers on um, marine warming, which was I was working for on coral death in the 90s. So three decades of work I've been involved with. It, and there's not much new here except the words we're using. Um, how will area statements link to wellbeing plans and local LDPs? What weight will they carry? Russell's answered that. Yeah, Russell, so um, material consideration for LDPs. Sorry, for those who can't see the sidebar, area statements are a material consideration for LDPs and will also be taken on board by PSBs. So that's in the legislation that all yeah. statutory bodies have to yeah. do that. OK, thank you. Um, and can we have a link to the information on the Welsh Government website, please? So I think... Um, so I'll send out um, the pack that I sent to the external people after this. OK, so we'll make that available. OK, we'll make that available internally. Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, Melanie, there are multiple spatial layers emerging around action. Not necessarily a bad thing, but there is a risk of SMNR assessments overlapping, e.g. area statements, opportunity catchments. How will this be managed? Hmm. Mm. You might have to take that one away because there's no one really, um, unless someone else on the call wants to give an opinion, I think we might take that one away, Melanie. Uh, and then one from uh, Lindsay Christian, which is surely natural resource, surely natural resources is different from wildlife and biodiversity. LDPs must take area statements into account when they are being developed. I think it's part of a test of soundness. It's all a matter of timing. Mm. OK, thank you. Yep. And Russell's come in saying, Russell Deaf, that is, we're working on having a specific page on the website that summarises opportunities and area statements and what that means for the planning systems. Thank you, Russell. If, if there are no other questions at the moment, I would be really interested in um, any feedback you've got on the usability of the Enduring Report on our website um, and what or and how you use sonar in your work. If you want to have a think about that, um, if, you, if you could send me an email at the sonar email address later on, that would be great, or if you've got any immediate comments. Yeah. OK, so Sonar 2020 will be um, obviously much more complex than the interim report and much larger, but we are um, proposing to use the same web based um, uh, format for the report, which for me is much easier. It's much easier to navigate and find the information you want. And there will be um, drop down levels from that where you will be able to get right down to the data links, hopefully through the portal. So. Um, 
we're interested in whether you prefer printed documents or, or the web pages, but at the moment we're going for um, a web format. Okay, so there's a bit of a dialogue there say, from um, Edwin Huckle saying, keep an eye out on the NRW website and area statements for the information. Uh, yes, Russell Dayas confirms it's coming soon and we hope to launch them by the end of March. Um, okay, so Tavia is just confirming that she likes the um, online format much better than PDFs. Yeah, and it also complies with the, the new accessibility um, legislation that's coming in. Um, the web great, keep, please keep in low tech for those of us on dodgy web connections. Okay, <laughs> we'll bear that in mind. And would be preferred as an option at least to have a downloadable PDF so we can read offline and print. Yeah, there's limitations at the moment on our website of how we can do that. Um, I will talk to our comm staff. Yeah, we are aware that some people um, do require a printed output, so we, we are considering that. Thank mm. you. Okay, and there's just confirmation as well that uh, a couple of people agreeing with that comment from Brad Welsh that, um, yeah, we need some downloadable material. Okay. All right, thank you. If you've got any more detailed comments on the format, um, as Julie says, please send them into the Sonar mailbox address. OK, does anyone have any more open questions, generic questions, how to get involved? What, what's the plan for um, a follow up, Julie? When's the next uh, event? I mean, we, hopefully we're going to send some information or people are aware of how they can get involved in the, um, the individual assessments with the assessment leads. And we've seen a request for the details yeah. of those. We'll do that um, and then we can provide an update um, if that would be helpful around how work is going over the next in the next month or two. And then we've got another webinar planned for, was it March, I think, wasn't it? March, OK. So. OK, and final question there from Ed, is the presentation available? It should have been sent out to everyone, which is why we wanted to collect all of the participants. So if you haven't had it, um, like Ed, we can resend. Yeah, we sent we sent a PDF of them this morning, Ed, so. You might have missed it in the post, yeah. That. OK, so we're almost up on our time. So I'd like to thank um, Russell Julie and Emily in particular for um, presenting and I'd like to thank all of you for being so engaged. Um, it is difficult to engage quickly but this is proving to be quite an efficient way of doing it. Um, but please keep in touch, please um, get in touch with the assessment leads, use the Sonar mailbox and we'll be in touch with you. So, Diolch am fawr iawn i bawb am gyfrannu heddi ac mi fyddwn i mewn cysylltiad cyn hir. So, thank you all very much and We'll close the um, webinar down now. Yeah.